this video, we're going to be checking out these, the Meta Ray-Ban Smart Glasses that have integrated into them the Llama Language Model Chatbot. And so we're going to get talking to it and see what it is capable of and what the impacts on education could be. Now this video isn't just a video about these glasses, although we will specifically be focusing on them, but it's about the impact of wearable artificial intelligence in general. As 2024 gears up to be the year of the consumer AI device, and a lot of them are taking the form of a wearable assistant, what is going to happen to how we work, how we learn, and how we play? There are big questions coming up because these are going to give us capabilities like we've never had before. And as the technology progresses, not just in 2024, but beyond that, they will really augment what we do when it comes to working, to playing, and to learning. And we're obviously going to focus on the learning side of that today. We've got a camera on this side, which takes video in portrait mode only. Um, so that's a, it's a bit of a downside for me because a lot of my video is in landscape, but it's portrait mode. And if I say to it, hey, Meta, record a video. And you will see over on this side, we have got a light. So this is a sensor. This is a light that lights up when recording so that people around you know that it is recording. So you're not the creepy person who's recording people without them knowing. And yeah, there it is. And I can say, hey, Meta, stop. And as you can see, it stops recording. I can also say, hey, Meta, take a photo. And as you can see by the light just here, it is taking a photograph, which you can see on the screen right now. So it does that as you'd expect it to do with it being smart glasses. And these aren't the first pair of Meta Ray-Ban sunglasses that can do that. We have also got on the side here a panel, which you, you can't see, so you wouldn't know this was a panel. Uh, but if you swipe it forward, it turns the volume up. Swipe it back, it turns the volume down. And also if I just press it near the front, it will turn on things like music. So if you've got Spotify on your phone, it will start playing Spotify music. That's a nice touch and kind of what you'd expect. And it plays the music um, through some, some speakers, some really powerful speakers, actually. So just near the ears on each leg of the glasses, we've got some speakers. And those speakers direct the sound directly into the ear. So if this was at full volume and someone was next to you, they would probably hear it a slight sound muffled but if you had it medium volume which is more than enough in a quiet area then they wouldn't be to hear that at all so i'm really impressed with just how how you interact with the glasses how you can use your voice also the touch so if i don't want to ask it to do a, take a photo or do a video i can just press a button on top or long press it to get the video so for kind of the basics of what we might expect with this technology in terms of the what it can record and the music it can play it's it's quite good. It's quite good. I mean, it leaves a lot to be desired. I, I I do a lot of my recording in in landscape mode. It doesn't do that, but it's fairly good for what it is. But that's not really why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for the artificial intelligence side of it because I'm really excited that Meta's Llama large language model is in these glasses, and it means I can talk to it and it can talk back to me. Now, just a little word of warning, I am in the UK, so when I set these glasses up, I had to do it with my VPN on, um, and the VPN set to America, because access to the large language model, being able to have a conversation with it through the glasses, is only available in the United States at the moment. So if you're, gonna, if you're outside of the United States and you're thinking of doing this, you're going to need a VPN to set them up. But if you've got one, it's set it up just like they are in the United States. So what it means is I can talk to this. So let's try it out. Hey, Better, what's the weather like? The current weather in Roland's Gill, England, is partly cloudy with a temperature of 12 Celsius. Brilliant. So you get the picture there. It, it talks. It goes into my ear. Only I can hear it. So I can be walking around having a conversation with this thing. And nobody really around me can hear it. I'm just having that conversation with the AI that's embedded into them. So it can do basics like that. It knows the location because it's connected to my phone 
um, via Bluetooth, so it can, it can give me weather. Not great weather, let's be honest. I am in the north of England, but it tells me the weather. Now, I've been wearing these all week. Um, I spent the, the first half of the week up in a place called Berwick-upon-Tweed, a lovely walled town uh, on this English-Scottish border. I've been writing and preparing the next book that I'm writing. And then I was on the road for the second half of the week. So first of all, I went down to a place called Colchester in Essex to deliver a keynote at a head teachers conference. And then uh, via London was down in Bournemouth on the south coast of England, again, delivering a keynote to a head teacher conference. And I, I got quite excited because I, I showed these off during the talk. Um, and one of the things you shouldn't really do in a talk, as well as what do they say? Don't, don't uh, work with animals and children. Don't work with new technology as well. But I did it. I thought, you know what? Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to try and show these off because one of the points I make in my keynote talk is how wearable assistance and not just wearable assistance, but AI assistance in general will have a big impact on education in the next 12 months to the next few years. And I want to get into that in just a little second. So let me show you just some of the things I, I did to sh demonstrate this technology to the head teachers in the room. So what I did was I said, hey, Meta, I am a student studying Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Could you explain to me the relationship between Friar Lawrence and Romeo? Friar Lawrence is a mentor and confidant to Romeo, providing guidance and support, but also makes critical mistakes that contribute to the tragic outcome. OK, Meta, my teacher said that Friar Lawrence wasn't really responsible for the death of Romeo and Juliet. Do you agree and could you explain? No. Friar Lawrence's actions, such as marrying the couple in secret and providing Juliet with a potion, contribute to the tragic outcome, making him partially responsible. OK, Meta, I need to learn this information for an exam, could you give me a, a rhyming rap to help me remember it? Friar Lawrence's mistakes did abound. Secret marriage, potion, message unfound. Okay, you can see that it's a very short, but it is designed to just give you short answers there, unlike ChatGPT, which would probably write the full rap for you. Let's try something a bit different. Um, as a student, let me say, hey Meta, I am studying business studies. I am in year 10 in an UK school. Could you help me come up with some business ideas that might work in Newcastle upon Tyne? Consider starting a sustainable business, like a recycling service or eco-friendly products, catering to Newcastle's growing demand for environmentally responsible practices. OK, Meta. Thank you. I really like technology. How could I incorporate technology into that? And could you give me some ideas for how I can start this business small? Develop a mobile app or website that helps Newcastle residents find and recycle hard to recycle items. Starting small with a local pilot program and partnering with local waste management services. So you can see it, it's really good. I like I, what I really liked is being able to have little conversations with it, asking it questions. OK, let's look at the impact on education. And there's a few questions I want to ask, which is how will we incorporate this tech into education? How will we motivate students to want to use this tech and AI in general? And what might we need to change about education in order to integrate it? I believe it's probably only a matter of months before teachers start to notice students wearing this type of technology. Now, it's not going to it's not going to come over like a wave and all of a sudden all students are going to be wearing it. But the first few students, probably in the United States first, and then over here in the UK and elsewhere, we'll start to wear this technology. And the implications for that are vast. What are we going to do the first time we're standing and teaching a class and the student says, actually, my AI assistant has just said that that's not quite true. This is what it said. So it could contradict us. And I wrote a, a blog post a few weeks ago about what we're going to do and how we're going to deal with the the ego side of that. So you can go and check that out at the AIeducator.io. But what are we going to do? Because just simply banning this technology, I don't think is going to be the best approach because of the benefits that are going to come from this technology as well. For example, these assistants are going to eventually be able to know us. They're going to know how we talk, how we learn. They're going to know how we'd like information to be presented to us and so on. 
And so they will be able to chunk the information to students in a way that they feel that is going to be challenging to students. They will be able to change an analogy so that it best suits the students and so that they could understand it and so on. We will get to a level where where personalised learning through these types of technologies will become um, something that, that a lot of us participate in. So simply banning it, I don't think, is the option. So how will we incorporate this where every student will basically have a, have some kind of wearable or some kind of um, technology very close by to them that will be able to inform them, be able to take them on a learning journey and so on. So I think that leads on nicely to the next question, and how will we motivate students to use this technology? Because we've now essentially got a technology that's going to keep getting better and better and better, where if you want to learn anything or know anything, you can do that. And I know we've had Google for a few years, but this does it on a whole new level and will also teach you skills. So actually teaching students all the knowledge that we think they're going to need for the rest of their lives, which is kind of how the education system has tended to work, isn't going to be the most important thing. I think it's going to be how do we motivate curiosity in students so that when they do communicate with this technology, they're doing it in a meaningful way that's going to help them drive the conversation and learn what they need to learn, because this will help them learn, it will help them work eventually, and it will help them play. And how are we going to motivate them to ask the right questions? Thirdly, what might we have to change? Well, I think simply just seeing school as a place where the vessel of a, of a student is filled up with knowledge by the teacher at the front, um, just telling them information and then assessing that information is going to have to change. I think we're going to have to focus on how do we create environments where students can collaborate with with other humans can collaborate with the technology in a meaningful way and enjoy that as well and that's going to come through that motivation and curiosity um i think the education system in recent years is is, is kind of and i say this in broad strokes has sucked the curiosity out of education because we've had to just prepare students for all the knowledge they will need to pass certain exams how are we going to reverse that trend? How are we going to make sure that students come to school because they enjoy it and because it's somewhere they can be curious and can pursue that curiosity by using AI and collaborating with AI and with their peers and their teacher? Three big challenges. OK, here's a bonus with this type of technology, especially with these meta array band glasses. In the next few weeks, they will be releasing the multimodal functionality within these so that will mean that you will be able to say hey meta look at this in front of me and tell me what it is help me solve a problem with this could you translate this and so on and so on so we're going to have an assistant that is with us that will travel us that will not only be able to hear what we're saying in the world around us but will also be able to see the world around us and help us with that in a very easy way just through voice activation it's going to change a lot of things, I think. This is the kind of one of the first iterations of this technology. It's going to keep getting better and better and better. And as all these new technologies and these new hardwares get released across the, the, the rest of this year, I think we'll have to come to grips with the implications of this. OK, I'll end just with a, a few more bits of information. These are the matte black glasses, which you can order off the, the Meta or the Ray-Ban website, and with transitional lenses. So when I go outside in the sun, they turn into sunglasses. And I really think, even though I don't wear glasses, I don't need them, you can get prescription lenses in them as well. Even though I don't need them for that purpose, I see myself wearing these quite a bit because I like them. They're quite stylish. They're Ray-Ban glasses, but also I get to use the power of a conversational AI anywhere I go when I'm wearing these. Tell me what you think if you've got a pair or if you've ordered some of the other technology that I've been talking about and what your views are on the future of wearable artificial intelligence. Thank you very much and see you next time.